Well, where would we be without a word problem? Uh, and we're going to use this particular word problem, or in using this particular word problem, I think we want to uh, we're going to employ the rational zero theorem to kind of help us along a little bit. But uh, let's read what we have here. It says a volleyball that is returned. I think that's all one word. I don't know why I type that as two, a volleyball. Uh, that is returned after a serve with an initial speed of 40 feet per second at a height of 4 feet is given by the function f of t equals 4 plus 40t minus 16t squared, where f of t is the height the ball reaches in feet and time, and t is the time in seconds. At what time? will the ball reach a height of 20 feet? Now, as I begin to look at this, and I guess the first thing I notice is that this function doesn't really suit my eye, and I'm gonna rewrite it as f of t equals negative 16t squared plus 40t plus four. I just like the way that looks better. All right, now let's see. We're trying to find out what's the time that it's gonna reach 20 feet, and it starts off at four feet. And the four feet is modeled there in the equation. Now, I could say, well, 20 feet has got to rise 16 feet. I'm just going to graph this equation and see when x or t in this case equals 16. But for me, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this equation equal to zero. So then I'd have negative 16t squared plus 40t plus 4 equals 20 when it gets 20 feet. And I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides so that this equation is now going to equal zero. So I got negative 16t squared plus 40t minus 16, negative 20 plus 4 equals zero. And now I'm going to start thinking about that. And then I'm looking at this equation, negative 16, 40, and negative 16. Those are the coefficients and the constants. And I realize that if I, and let me just say this before I start, if it, since that's a negative right there on the 16t squared, that quadratic function would look something like that. And that would make sense when I'm thinking about the flight of the ball. But I'm not sure I really care about that. I just really want to see what the x-intercepts are. And in looking at negative 16, 40, and negative 16, I realized that I could factor out negative 8. And when I do, then I'm going to have 2t squared minus, see, positive 40 divided by negative 8 is going to leave me with negative 5t. And negative 8 into negative 16 then is plus 2 and that's equal to zero. Now, we've been talking about the rational zero theorem, and so rational zeros, well, we know that that is a function of p over q, where p is the multiples of the constant, in this case, would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, over, what I wrote right there, over the multiples or factors of the lead coefficient, which again is plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So my possible rational real zeros in this function then are plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and plus or minus one half. By the time I finish off looking between the numerator and the denominator. And so those are my possible real zeros. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus one half, which in this case, all of the negatives, since we're talking about time, can't come into play, right? Because time's not negative. 
So in this case, it's we're either talking about one second, two seconds, or a half a second. So let's go to the next slide, and we're going to do a little work on that using these possible rational zeros. Now over here on the right is what I graphed. Um, I graphed this, the 2t squared minus 5t plus 2. And that's what I graphed. And I can see here that I've got possible real zeros. Remember, I could have one, I thought either a 1, 2, or 1 half. Well, that looks pretty close to the 2. And that looks pretty close to the 1 half. And I could either use synthetic division, uh, or I could actually just factor this 2t t, t squared minus 5t plus 2. Uh, well, let's just use synthetic division. Why not? So let's go with the 2. That looks pretty good. So we got 2, negative 5, and 2. Bring down to 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And Shazam, we got a 0 remainder. And then this depressed polynomial is 2x minus 1. Let's set that equal to 0. And let's add 1 to both sides. So now 2x is equal to 1. And x now is equal to 1 half, which looks pretty good to what I see here on the graph. And if I had just decided to just factor this thing straight out from the very beginning, think about that. I got two sets of parentheses. I got 2t squared. Well, that means I got a, and 2 is just 2 and 1, so I got 2t and t. My constant is a positive. My middle term is a negative, so inside my parentheses are going to both be negative. And let's see, 2x... 2t, excuse me, uh, minus 1 and t minus 2 would give me those two factors. And when I set both of those equal to 0, I would have factors at 1 half and at 2. So There's more than one way to skin a cat. But there we go. And we took a little snapshot of the rational zero theorem at the same time. Pretty cool.